Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Yeah, we take a look at the micro count here. Very, very choppy price action. Shouldn't be a surprise. Um, we are dealing here with ending diagonal structures. I already read in the comments, we are bullish, we are bullish. Well, I think we are bullish generally on the Bitcoin chart. But first of all, I think still we need to complete this correction to the downside, which gets increasingly choppy and sloppy. And that is not a problem. It just means we have to expect further boring price action. But at least it means that um, the move to the downside is slow. It is highly corrective. Exactly that is what we want to see. I want to explain a few things in this video. I also want to answer a couple of questions because I had questions about, okay, look, if we are in a C wave to the downside, shouldn't the price action be impulsive instead of just this, whatever it is, sideways mess. Um, and maybe we start first with taking a look at the overall wave count. Then we take a look at the lower degree wave structure. We still have the idea that and it's not loading but <laughs> we had a five wave move to the upside here there you go a five wave move up off the 15th of june low to the 13th of july high as anticipated and it reached our target so it did exactly what we wanted um, in that move to the upside and now it's doing what we want in that move to the downside of course it would be nice to have a clear three wave move instead of such a choppy mess but it's not necessarily a problem because we're just, you know, slow motion. We are grinding our wave down as we're working our way here through the wave two correction. Wave one to the upside, wave two to the downside. The idea is that this yellow box is going to be the launch pad for a third wave rally. Invalidation point is basically here at 26,280. In this move down, we're dealing with an ABC structure. The C wave is a five wave move and the, the C wave is an ending diagonal. Okay, so we have an A wave down, we have a B wave up, which was shallow, but not too shallow. And the C wave down is extremely choppy, extremely choppy, not necessarily a problem. As I said, the C wave down is an ending diagonal because it is too choppy for an impulse. So you need to understand there are two ways how a C wave can unfold. Both are five waves. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's say this is a C wave down, exactly what we see here. What I've sketched out here would be an ideal impulse. Nice five waves, five wave moves, yeah? Five waves in wave one, three waves in wave two, five waves in wave three, three waves in wave four, five waves in wave five. Typically it would occur quite quickly. However, we've seen it increasingly in the past that Bitcoin and cryptos generally like to do C waves as ending diagonals. That's the other way. It's also a five wave move, but it's far less steep. It is far less steep. You have a much you know, more shallow C wave also in five waves, but much more shallow. Oftentimes this allows the price to create nice um, uh, to create nice divergences, nice bullish divergences. And the difference here is that each of the waves is a three wave move. Wave one is a three wave move. Wave two as well. I'm not going to put that in here, but the wave three as well, ABC. The wave four as well. And the wave five as well, ABC. Now, this leads to increasingly choppy price action. That's exactly what we see here, in my opinion. Because you need to understand that an A wave is corrective, a B wave is corrective. And then sometimes it could be that even the C wave in the third wave, like in this case here at the moment, could be an ending diagonal in itself. So you're dealing with a five wave move within which each of the sub waves again have three waves. So I know it can be a bit mind blowing, but it is extremely choppy. And it means if you have an ending diagonal, the potential for the C waves in these sub waves also to be ending diagonals just means Look, you're just dealing with basically nearly unpredictable subwaves. So we don't try to predict every single wave and every single subwave. I'm just trying to take that out again a second. Um, what we try to understand is, okay, where are we roughly in this on this roadmap? It is less predictive. It's more like a, a pathway that we want to go. Where are we? How far will we likely go? And when do we expect this move down to finish? And the structure allows us to understand that it shouldn't, we're not too far off, okay? Because the bulls are getting stronger. You see that even today we broke above that potential wedge pattern. Now, I don't consider that a sustained break to the upside yet. 
Um, but the bulls are there, okay? So it's not like, right, you know, the bears are fully in control, which is exactly what we want. We don't want the bears to be in control. We rather want the bulls to be there, to be lurking in the shadows and to take the opportunity because we want this yellow box to be the launch pad for a third wave rally. And at the moment, I've now put in a micro count, actually, um, an idea at least. It's always dangerous to go that much into the micro degree. But, you know, in this C wave, we have a five wave move down. One, wave two done. Wave three is currently unfolding, most likely. The wave four would come and the wave five would come. I am watching for the area around 28.3k next as key support. If it goes below that, then we're looking at 27,460. But it's all still in the yellow box. Um, at the moment, I have no evidence that this move up is over. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that this move down is over. And I've added a potential micro count here. So you know that we talked about the idea that the A wave of the third wave is done. The B wave was done in resistance. Okay, if we push higher, we can always extend it a little bit higher. Ideally, we avoid that, but you never know. Then... We're now in the C wave. Again, the C wave is a five wave move. And it looks like that this C wave of a third wave, I know it can be difficult, but I know a lot of people want to understand exactly where we are. And I can tell you this is difficult to, to know at every stage, right? Especially if you go into the micro count. But still, I want to give you my best view. Um, so it looks like that the C wave of the third wave here is again an ending diagonal because we've got three waves down. I've got three waves up and we get rejected just now. Could be that we are next coming down in a third wave of the C wave, then a fourth and a fifth. Then we complete the C wave of the third. I know this can be complex. Um, and if you're not fully familiar with Elite Wave, it might it might confuse you completely. You can always rewatch it. But I know that a lot of the viewers here like to understand the micro count. And you just need to understand that a C wave doesn't need to be an impulse. It can be an ending diagonal, which is very choppy. If something is a diagonal, you have to expect the wave counts to change, especially on the lower time frames. So don't see this as a fix. Don't think, okay, you know, in the next few days, we definitely get our three, we definitely get our four or five, then the larger four. It doesn't need to go like that. Um, especially if we deal with diagonals, we have to expect this situation to change quickly. Most importantly, Bitcoin has already reached our trend reversal area highlighted in yellow and can turn around at any point. It's just not very evident at this stage that it's doing that. So I still expect lower prices. All right, that's my update about Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.